Okay, so this is part two of my tutorial on picker views. I've had a couple of questions from my viewers um, that wanted me to share how to actually capture the data from the picker view and maybe use it in a label or, or whatnot. So I'm going to show you what this might look like before we build it. So we, here's our original picker view. We had it filled with the uh, fruits. And what we're going to do is have whatever we select in here will show up in a label right here next to this term item picked. So, you ready? Let's get going on this. We'll close this out. I'm just continuing on my uh, tutorial from part one, uh, going to the storyboard, which we are in. I'm going to grab two labels. I have one here already that I had to show you for... Uh, on the simulator just now and I'm going to grab another label so again go down to this lower right corner start typing in label and it'll come right up for you we're gonna drag it over to our storyboard and open it up now I want to give this a little bit more more uh, more readability so I'm going to increase the font size to about 20 and I'll do the same for this one so again all I'm doing is clicking on it Going over to the inspections panel, make sure I'm on the right one, and I'm going to increase this here where it says font, and click that up to about 20 as well. All right, now we should be good to go. What we need to do now is close out our right-hand pane. I'm going to open up the uh, assistant editor, and I'm going to go into, make sure I am in the right um, thing here. Hold on one second. I'm not quite sure. There it is. There we go. Okay. What I'm going to do is click on the label. I'm going to control drag this into my view controller dot swift and I'm going to create a IB outlet and let's call that um, item label. So item label and it's of type UI label and we're going to hit connect. All right, so now this label is connected to this IB outlet. We don't need to connect this label because it's not doing anything. It's just for readability. It's just, you know, sort of a title of to show what we're what uh, information we're showing. All right. Now, um, let's close out our assistant editor and let's start coding what we need. Go back to viewcontroller.swift. So as we mentioned in our first part of this tutorial, we added these functions, the number of components in the picker, which is one. It's basically how many wheels are spinning, how many picker wheels will we be working with. We're only working with one. The other function we did was number of rows in the wheel, and we set that to the count of our array called foods, which is up here. Okay, and the third function we needed is this one, title for row. And this will actually set the label for each row in the picker wheel. So they'll pull that value from this array. All right. So now to be able to select a row and use that value, we need one more function. So we're going to go take our cursor up to picker view delegate, hit the command, it turns into a hand cursor, click on that, and we'll scroll down. We're going to look for the one called did select row. And that's this function down here. And I'm going to highlight it. Command C to paste. I'm sorry, to copy. Go back to my view controller.swift. Command V to paste. And we're going to give it an open and curly brace. Give ourselves some room. Let's scroll up here a little bit. There we go. All right, so what are we going to do in here? Well, we need to create a variable. And that variable is going to hold the value of the row that has been selected. So let's call it uh, var item selected. And it's going to be set to the value from our array foods at a specific row. And that is how that is written. Okay, so what are we going to do with the value that's held in here? Well, we're going to set that to the item label 
dot text property. Okay, so item label dot text, which is the item label, is our IB outlet from up here, which is this label that we threw onto the storyboard, which is right over here. We don't have it. There we have it. This label right here. That's what we're going to populate. So let's go back to our file, viewcontroller.swift, and we're setting that text property, the item label dot text property, and we're going to set it to item item selected. There we go. Item selected. All right. So now the value of the row in the picker view from our array foods is going to be what is populating the text property of our item label. All right. Now, we're going to go ahead and run this right now. We're not quite finished, but I want you to see what it looks like for now. So we're going to hit run. And here we go. So we're going to move it to bananas. And there we go. Bananas pops up. Move it to grapes. And you'll see whatever we land on, that's what's going to be populating the, the um, this label property. All right. Now, let me. I'm going to run this again. Let me just move this over here a little bit better so we can see it. I'm going to stop running. And I'm going to run it again. And I want you to show, notice something. See how nothing is populated when we start this? Wouldn't it be great if it was already pre-populated with whatever the pick a wheel is started on instead of waiting to change it to be populated? Well, that's an easy fix. I'll show you how to do that. So we're going to close this out and we're going to go over to view did load. And under view did load, we're going to set the item label dot text to our foods array. And we're going to set it to the first index, which is index zero. Now, I'm going to have another tutorial discussing arrays. But in Swift, as in a lot of other programming languages, uh, the numbering starts with zero. So the first item in array is actually held at index zero. The second item is held at index one. And it, it sometimes, if you're not used to it, it can throw you off. But um, just know that the first item in an array in this language is set at index zero. All right, so let's see. We're going to run this again. And there we go. We just opened it. It says item picked and we're set to apples rather than a blank label. And again, no matter what you do, it'll keep changing. Okay, so I hope that helped. Thank you to those who asked these questions. I really appreciate it. I'm happy to help out in any way I can.